Well, the death toll has risen in the volcanic disaster in Tonga. At least two people in the island country have been killed following Saturday's enormous eruption and the tsunami that followed. There's much we still don't know about the full impact of the disaster as Tonga remains largely cut off from much of the world. Now, this was the scene on Friday after the first eruption before Saturday's more powerful blast. The agency Save the Children says the tsunami destroyed at least 50 homes in Tonga and damaged more than 100 others. Relief groups say the top priority is getting clean water and food to the people of Tonga over fears the volcanic ash likely contaminated supplies there. Royal Navy ships from New Zealand are expected to deploy in the coming hours with much needed humanitarian aid. Underwater communication lines remain severely disrupted and ash clouds have made it difficult to fully assess the impact of the disaster. Well, CNN meteorologist Tyler Malden joins me now live here in Atlanta. But let's start with our Blake Essig, who's live in Tokyo. Good to see you. So, Blake, what more are you learning about the situation in Tonga and when aid might arrive there? Yeah, you know, Rosemary, we know that falling ash remains a huge problem. It's because of that ash uh, that outside aid hasn't been able to arrive. According to Australia's Minister of Defense, uh, planes carrying aid can't land because ash has rendered the runway unusable. Now, to illustrate that point, check out these before and after images uh, looking down on Tonga's main island. Everything is seemingly covered in ash. Now, as a result, New Zealand has sent two Royal Navy ships to assist uh, with the recovery, uh, but it will likely take them about three days before they arrive. Now, for those not familiar with Tonga, uh, it's made up of more than 170 islands and home to about 100,000 people. Uh, this remote uh, island chain is located in the South Pacific, about 800 kilometers uh, east of Fiji and about 24 hundred kilometers away from New Zealand. So uh, at this point, so far only surveillance flights have been able to be carried out. And according to New Zealand's government, a significant damage can be seen along the western coast of Tonga's main island. A New Zealand's high commission in Tonga also says that the volcanic eruption damaged communication capabilities. So for the time being, with communication extremely limited, the island nation is essentially cut off from the rest of the world, as you said, leaving uh, friends and family trying to check on loved ones uh, with little to no response, and that includes aid workers. Uh, earlier today, CNN spoke with Katie Greenwood uh, with the International Red Cross, who says that um, she was able to briefly make contact with her colleagues in Tonga, who told her that things are going relatively well. Take a listen. We're very focused on um, the water emergency that might be emerging as a result of the ash fall um, into the main water sources for people. So that will be a focus of our efforts in the coming days. We're also focused on making sure that people have the necessary items they require to shore up and, and, and remedy their houses that may have been affected by ashfall and inundation um, from the tsunami waves as well. Well, Greenwood says that things seem uh, stable on the main island. She says that there's a big concern for some of the lower lying areas and islands closer to the eruption site. Uh, roads and properties were flooded in the mainland from a roughly meter tall tsunami wave, which damaged about 100 homes. But for now, the big concern is the ash fall. Save the Children says that drinking water supplies could be contaminated, and there's immediate concern for Tonga's air and water safety. Rosemary? All right, many thanks to you, Blake. Appreciate that. Uh, Tyler, I want to go to you now. Of course, uh, what more are you seeing in terms of conditions on the ground in the region? Yes, yeah, so Rosemary, of course, we're going to continue to see at least some small issues uh, with the Tonga eruption because the initial eruption on Saturday was just so huge. I mean, this is um, an eruption that would only occur uh, once every 1,000 years. The last time it did erupt, though, was back in 2014, 2015. Um, what we are seeing is yet another volcanic eruption within the Ring of Fire, which is where 90% of the, the world's earthquakes um, quakes actually occur. And as a result, you also get the seismic activity and also the volcanoes here as well. So we'll continue to see some small issues there, maybe a little bit more in the way of seismic activity and whatnot. And then you can see here too, the, the ash cloud that went 
so high up into the air, about 45, 50, maybe even 60,000 uh, feet up into the air. And it spread all of this over Australia and elsewhere, um, leading to the issues which we just mentioned a sec second ago. And the shockwave too created a tsunami which uh, did cause damage as we've seen. And notice the ash covering uh, the ground here. This is just phenomenal stuff from such a huge explosion and a historic explosion too. Notice the before and af after uh, right here of the caldera. Uh, you can see that it's right there on December 8th, but then after the eruption, it's gone. Rosemary? Yeah, incredible, isn't it? Uh, many thanks to Tyler Molden and Blake Essig.